Hey, Dr. Kent DeLay here. I'm a board-certified urologist practicing in West Columbia, South Carolina, and a topic which came up recently is difficult catheterization. So I want to give some tips and tricks that I've picked up over the years for placing a catheter in a male patient where there's some type of difficulty getting it to go easily. So I want to preface that by saying as a urologist, sometimes when these techniques don't work, uh, I have extra tools and resources I can bring to the bedside uh, to facilitate catheter placement. But, but sometimes without any special tools, you can get the catheter placed with the techniques we're going to talk about below. So the first situation I find where people run into difficulty is just voluntary guarding, meaning that there's a lot of tension in the pelvic floor muscles and that these are so tight that they're making it difficult to pass the catheter beyond them. Uh, so if you think about it, a lot of times when people are having a catheter placed, they're nervous, they're uncomfortable, and all of these things make relaxation of the pelvic floor difficult difficult. So there's no miracle here, but I often find that using lots of lubrication, using a lidocaine uh, jelly uh, insertion into the urethra, and simply holding gentle pressure at the point of resistance for a few extra seconds will allow for those pelvic floor muscles to relax and allow for the catheter to go beyond that into the bladder. Number two would be some type of obstruction or a stricture which is making the urinary system too narrow. This can be anywhere from where the urethra and bladder meet, what we call the bladder neck, to what we call the meatus or the tip of the penis. In that case, you would literally see a narrowed hole at the tip of the penis as the reason you're having difficulty getting the catheter in. If you suspect obstruction based on the history or examination, using a 12 French silicone catheter, which is narrower and fairly firm, will sometimes allow you to get by those obstructions without having to do a dilation or other techniques. Number three would be enlargement of the prostate. So when you hold the penis on a stretch when you're placing a catheter, this creates a straight urethra until you get into the prostate. But once you get into the prostatic urethra, the channel does take a abrupt turn where it goes into the bladder. Sometimes this angle can make passing a straight catheter somewhat difficult. So in these situations, using a coude catheter, which has a curved tip on the end that faces upward, will allow you to navigate this angle instead of having the catheter hit the back wall of the prostate, which can sometimes happen with a straight catheter. A couple of tips regarding this is you want to make sure that the coude catheter is oriented appropriately so that the tip is up. The way you do this is to make sure that the balloon port is the one facing the ceiling or facing up, and that allows you to know that the catheter is oriented correctly. Uh, the fourth reason would be a false passage, and what this means is that Repeated attempts to place a catheter have essentially created a hole in the wall of the urethra and that the tip of the catheter keeps going into this when you attempt to pass it. This isn't easy to overcome and this is where we often come into play uh, where we can do cystoscopy and actually visually bypass the false passage. But sometimes gently pulling the catheter back and forth will allow you to quote unquote get lucky and bypass the false passage. The fourth reason would be obesity or a buried penis. Here, the penis is buried in the suprapubic fat pad, making visualization of the tip of the penis more narrow. Obviously, having extra help and having somebody pushed down on the suprapubic fat pad will sometimes bring the tip of the penis into view and allow for passage of the catheter. Uh, sometimes, if we're not immediately available, simply placing the catheter down into the uh, ring of external foreskin and probing back and forth will allow you to get lucky and hit the meatus or the urethra and pass the catheter that way. And I often uh, am able to do that technique at bedside. So kind of a pathway or algorithm that I would suggest is if initial attempts at catheterization are not successful, Use a Eurojet or lidocaine jelly to keep the patient as comfortable as possible. Pain medication uh, by IV if necessary. Place a 12 French catheter if you suspect based on history or physical examination that there may be a stricture. 
If you believe based on the history that there's an enlarged prostate, go ahead and use an 18 French coude. If you don't really know, I would say uh, uh, use a standard catheter kit initially. If that is unsuccessful, move to an 18 French coude. And if that is unsuccessful, try a 12 French silicone catheter. And if at that point it's unsuccessful, give the patient a break, call urology, and hopefully we can bring about a fairly rapid solution to the problem.